We are the Sirens of Sleuth, back again to help the real AI agents investigate how Ideogram 2 is helping creators generate quality content. Stick around while Jessica shows you how to use Ideogram AI for all sorts of content creation. From social media posts, to print-on-demand products, and even how to create your own merch with Ideogram 2.0, and the real AI agents you will be creating in no time. Before we get started, you should know all the info you need to create content just like we do in this video can be found in the description. Stay tuned until the end of the video to see our full Sirens of Sleuth creative video project. Ready? Here we go. Here's what we're going to cover in this video. We'll go over what's new in Ideogram 2 versus Ideogram 1. We'll cover five tips for better prompting in Ideogram 2.0. I'll teach you how to create a text image design to create your own custom merch. I'll let you know when Ideogram 2 is the right generative AI tool for you to be using in your content creation. And of course, I'll show you how you can access the new iOS app app and how easy it is to use right on your mobile device. Be sure you catch the premiere of Neon Thoughts at the end of this video. First things first, let's open up the case file and see what's changed since we last explored Ideogram together. You'll notice that when you come in to the main homepage now, you have a few different options than what were there before. So if you ever want to compare the 2.0 to the 1.0, you can always come where it says model and click that down here. So you see that when I go back to model one, we've got all of those old filters that are on here. Remember, there were so many of them. If you want to know more about all of these, feel free to check out our other ideogram video, which is linked in the description of this video. It will help break down down all of these for you. I will also attach the cheat sheet guide that we made for these different filters in the description as well, so you have access to that. But if we go back to the 2.0 from that 1.0 model, we can see that now there are only six different things to choose from down here, which you might think is a setback from how many there were before, but in actuality, I found that by using these six simple um, filter effects on the images, I'm able to produce some beautiful stuff coming out of here. And I don't have to think about as much which filter is going to produce the correct image. So I don't have to worry about putting in like topography when I put text in. All of those things are really speeding up the creation process in here, which is a definite plus in my mind. The other thing that you're going to see that's different from the 1.0 here, when you came over here, you had tile, which is where you could like create an image that would be like a repeating sort of pattern if you were looking for like a scrapbook kind of background. And then you see under the 1.0, you have the rendering, the seed number, and the negative prompt. So if we flip this back to the 2.0, you'll notice now that the tiling is actually gone. But it is replaced with this color palette here. So as a brand creator who manages multiple brands, this is super, super helpful in being able to keep consistency through your images when working with different brands. So you have two options here. You can leave it on auto or you can create your own color palette here. Let's say I wanna go ahead and create my own. You can see that there are a couple options on here to choose from, just sort of generic type, you see melon, magic, jungle, fresh, any of those that you can choose from. But if you want your own, you can come in and hit this little plus button next to custom. And when you do that, you can actually enter in the color code that you want to use, or you can go through on the little slider and actually find the color that you want. So if you're using the little slider to visually pick the colors that you want, I highly recommend when you find one you like. So for instance, I like this green. I can take this color code and just copy it just so that I know I'm using a consistent color throughout. I can just throw that in a little notepad um, or you know, in a document somewhere, if you're actually creating a brand, you want to have that consistency on all of your different platforms, whether it's, you know, Canva or here or your other image creators, you want to know your color codes. So let's say I like this green. And then if I come over and I hit the plus button again, I can pick another color. So let's go with a blue. 
And I can do it again. This time let's add a yellow, a really bright yellow. And then again, let's do a pink, a very bright pink there. And then you can do one more here. So let's go ahead and do, let's do maybe a purple for this one. So I'll pick a purple there. And then you see I have all my color codes down here. So again, I can copy and paste from there after I've picked them if you'd rather do it that way. And that way I've got all of those colors. And then when I come in and I select that color palette, I can say something like, those are the Sirens of Sleuth branding colors. And this is how I want the images to come out looking with those colors. So I'm gonna say something simple like create a text graphic that reads here to solve the case with a background of file folders of different colors. I'm gonna set my aspect ratio here and I'm just gonna do it at a 916 so that we can compare these four images pretty easily. And then you can see here that you can change that size to anything on here though and you have a slider to adjust that size as well. But let's stick with that 916 aspect here. And let's go ahead and set it on quality and then I'm gonna generate that. And you can see that the generation screen is minimized down here, but if I go up to the top and hit my images, it will be large there. So there you can see that it tried to pull in all of those different colors to make that design image there. Let's go ahead and set it on auto and see what we get. And then we'll do one on general. We'll do one on realistic. We'll do one on design. We'll do one on 3D. And we'll do one on anime. And as soon as these are ready, we'll come back and take a look at them. Okay, so you can see here that the first set, which was done on the auto setting up here for the filter, created four different options, all with the correct font on each one. Everything is spelled correctly, looks good there. Each one includes those different colors that we used in the color palette. So we've got purple, we've got blue, we've got yellow, we've got pink, we've got green, we've got, same over here, pink, a little bit of a weird kind of navy blue purple. That one's a little bit off on the colors, honestly, I feel like. But this one pulled them all in well. We've got blue, we've got green, we've got yellow, we've got pink. Missing the purple as much over here, kind of just lean towards more of the dark blue. But then the middle one here, you can see it's got actual like teal binders, pink binders, much more realistic on that one. I've noticed that using the auto prompt really typically will give you four very different designs to kind of give you a base idea of what you might be looking for. And then the second one here, we have the general setting on, and you can see that it's kind of generic, but very simple in the design. The font is all spelled correctly again. Everything looks good on that. You can see that the color has brought in all of those colors on them. This one leans a little bit more towards like the red and green. There is no purple, no real pink. I was kind of looking for more of a neon type theme with the color palette here, but you can see it is pulling in the correct color scheme as far as which colors it is using, just not the hue or tone that I would really like them to be in there. And then this third one that we generated is going to be your realistic version. This is good for photorealism, real life situations, people, that sort of stuff is what this setting really does well. And you can see again, four very different images here. Um, this one kind of did like a retro vintage on the color, more of the red um, and gray, that really didn't pull in the color scheme very well on any of these. If I were to choose one, they did the best job of the colors. I'd have to go with this middle one here, but you can see that the font is not correct on this one. And it really, the card catalog type look just isn't what I was going for. All in all, this one's pretty cool. It has a little note that says here to solve the case and then a couple different file folders that are of the color scheme that we wanted. But it's missing some of those integral colors like the green and the more neon based purple and blue. So overall, the realism wasn't very good for this one. 
But if we go up to the next setting that we did here, the design, this is where Ideogram 2 is really excelling on things. This is perfect for creators who are doing print on demand items, for people who are doing their own merch designs. Um, we're going to get into that here in just a bit, but design really is where it's at for me as far as using the ideogram 2.0 so if you take a look at these really pulled in the color schemes well here kind of added in a little bit of the orange and didn't include the pink that i wanted there um, but this one here has a good blend of the colors not as neat as a um, image as i would like but this one here is a pretty good overall image. I mean, it says here to solve the case. It's even got a little detective hat here and the magnifying glass. And then the nice use of those colors that have all been pulled in. Maybe not as neon as I was going for, but it is holding true to the color palette scheme of what colors are being included on this image. Over here, very basic. This would be a good graphic to use. Um, it is missing the pink and kind of dulled out into a red and orange kind of color versus what we were going for. But all in all, very usable images there. The next one that we ran is the 3D. As you can imagine, what that does is try to produce images that are three-dimensional in the output look of them. So we can see here that it really looks like the font is coming off of the page here on all of these, whether that's from the kind of shadow added here um, or the block look back here. All of them do have that three-dimensional feel. You'll notice that the color scheme held somewhat close to what we were looking for, but it seems to be really undersaturated in the actual colors we were trying to use. This one over here has just a touch of the purple and a touch of the pink, um, but holds probably the best to the colors, I would say, out of these four. And then finally, we have the anime setting. So you can see here it actually produced sort of like a cartoon anime type look. Um, very hard to read here. You almost could see that as an X on this image instead of an R for the here to solve the case. But still very cool looking. Has the green, blue, not the neon again that I was looking for so much. So you can see there that just by running that same prompt on these six different settings, all of the images that were able to be created that quickly with that font on them. Same thing if we were to go into the color palette and just choose one that was already set up here. Let's say, for example, the ember. If we choose that and we come in and we generate, let's go back to the design here and we come in and we generate, you can see then how it uses the same text and the same sort of imagery in the back, but it changed the color palette here to that new color palette. So really brought in those pinks. Um, the hues that you can see here when you click on the image it shows you the color palette so you can kind of see where it was used in the image and then let's say for example I really like this image but I want to just have it a little bit more upscaled and a higher quality resolution I can come in and once I've clicked on the design you'll see at the top this upscale button right here we're able to click that upscale button and you'll see then that it actually kicks it back into the version one with all the options on your settings. So again, be sure you check out all of that information that's in the description about that. But you can go ahead and give it different levels on the detail. You can give it different resemblance levels on the weight. So I want this to look exactly like this one and I want it to be very detailed. So I'll bump both of those up to 100 and then you can see there's an upscale button once you hit that. The upscale is the only time when you actually go to generate an image on here that it's only producing one image instead of four images at a time. So it is doing that upscale right there. If we come back into my images, we'll then see the upscaled image. So we can look at both of these side by side and you can definitely tell a little bit of a higher quality on the upscale. Now seems like the perfect time for me to let you know that you can get a free copy of my latest ebook, 10 Tips for Ultimate Prompting for Images in Leonardo AI, as a thank you gift for just signing up to our email list using the link in the description of this video. 
Now let's talk about prompting. First, let me tell you how I knew that my prompting strategy would have to be a little bit different than what I typically had done in Ideogram in the past on version one. So I came in and I just searched my images up here and I just put in sirens because when I made the last Ideogram video for you guys, I used Sirens of Sleuth to begin with. So I went ahead and just searched that and it brought up everything that I had in here for the Sirens of Sleuth. So let's go ahead and come down to see where we can find a more photorealistic image. Okay, let's work with this one right here. So if I go ahead and take the magic prompt from before and I put that up in the prompt box and I'll go ahead and choose realistic and quality and change it to the size of the original image here. You can see this was the image created on Ideogram version one. And this is what came out of version two. So you can see not near as good as what the version one was. So I knew that the prompting had to be a little bit different than how I was prompting before, because obviously before I really had a good grasp on how I could make photorealistic images in here. So I tested so many images with different prompts, guys. I mean, this is crazy how much I've done in the last couple of days that I've been testing the Ideogram 2.0. So you can see here, I've tried all kinds of stuff. So I'm not guessing at the five tips that I'm about to give you. I've tried and tested them and they will definitely work to help you produce better images than if you just go in blindly and think that you can prompt ideogram in the same way that you used to be able to. So I realized pretty early on that I was gonna have to try some different tricks for prompting to see what was working and what wasn't in ideogram 2.0. So let me save you quite a bit of time in having to go figure out what some of the prompting tips that actually are working are. And let me just tell you what I found out. There are five main things to pay attention to when prompting in Ideogram 2.0. Number one, be specific with your descriptions. Specific details help the AI better understand and generate the exact features you want. This is important, especially when describing like character, physical attributes, um, what they're wearing, what other objects you want included in the image. That way the AI can take more of your vision to put it into the image and create a more detailed scene. Like sharp blue eyes, confident expression, black leather notepad, reflective glass doors, vivid yellow crime scene tape, long wavy brown hair. Those sort of specific attributes will help the AI better produce the image that we want with the detective and the scene looking how we want it to be in the long run. Number two, Leverage contextual keywords. Contextual keywords set the mood, the tone, and the style of the image. That way the AI understands and is able to produce the scene that more matches what you were going for in the intended atmosphere. So think words like cinematic, noir, neon lit, contemporary elegance, atmospheric, classic noir film, shadowy, words like that will really help the AI more align with what my vision is for the image. Number three, use action verbs to guide layout. Action verbs help direct the AI on how to position elements within the image, ensuring a balanced and intentional composition. So think things like holding a notepad, highlights her determined expression, position her standing slightly to the left, Ensure the club's neon sign is visible. If I'm making a scene where I need the character to be looking at me, that is something that I would want to be sure that I put in the prompt. Number four, incorporate inspiration references. So referencing certain styles or specific eras can really help the AI create an image that reflects a more particular aesthetic. So think like if you wanted your detective to be like from a 1940s film or something like that, I could use words like inspired by a classic detective novel or 
reminiscent of 1940s fashion or vintage glow or dramatic tension. I could also add things like retro elements or blending past and present. Key trigger phrases like that can really help change the overall appearance of your image and ideogram. Number five, you guys hear me say this all the time when talking about prompting and producing these AI images. Iterate and refine. Refining your prompt always allows you to tweak the details, improving the final output by adjusting elements like lighting, motion, and clarity. Speaking of iteration, now seems like a great time to mention Ideagram has launched an iOS app. Head over to the App Store and download it so you can create on the go. With the Explore feature on the app, you can get ideas for your next creation from anywhere. Imagine being able to make custom memes anytime and any place. With the new app, you are no longer tied to your PC. By the way, if you want to learn how to make your own talking avatar video just like this one, we have you covered. Check out the videos we have linked in the description after you finish watching this video. Now that we're done going over the five prompting tips to help you produce better images in Ideogram 2.0, and you guys have seen all of the new features involved in the upgrade, including the color palette and the new styles. Let's go ahead and I will show you really quickly one of my favorite things to do with Ideogram 2.0 and one of the main uses that um, I as a creator find myself using it for, for print on demand products. So I'm going to show you how we can come into Ideogram and make a t-shirt design for the Sirens of Sleuth. And then we can take that over into a system like Printify and have our merch ready to go and able to provide a link to the public where they can purchase the t-shirts. So I'm going to put in here a simple prompt. I'm looking to create a futuristic female detective with dark red hair. She's wearing high tech gear. Um, including augmented reality glasses and a holographic display emerging from her wrist. She's surrounded by digital elements like data streams and circuit patterns. The text Sirens of Sleuth is placed above the detective in a sleek modern font. I'm going to make sure on my style for when I'm creating these designs for the merch, I'm going to choose design. And then I do want it to be this one one here. And I just always leave magic prompt on on ideogram unless I'm using one of those master prompts. So I'm going to go ahead and hit generate. And just so that we have a couple to choose from, I'm going to run three of these really quick. And then we'll come right back and take a look at them and choose which one we want to put on our T-shirt. Just looking right off the bat at what we got here. I can eliminate the ones that have not enough fingers or something wonky with the hands or her positioning. So that means that for this first row, the only real usable ones are this one here and this one here. The second row, the usable ones are absolutely none of them. Too many fingers on every hand or not enough fingers or her fingers like are crossed on this one. That's not going to work. On the top row here, we've got two usables. We've got this one here where Sirens of Sleuth is correct. She has the right amount of fingers. The scenery in the background is correct. And then we have this one here where she again has the right amount of fingers. The Sirens of Sleuth is correct and the background's pretty cool looking. So I think between those two, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on a shirt. So what I need to do is come into the image and first of all, since I'm going to be using it on something like the merch link, I'm going to go ahead and upscale this. So I'll hit upscale really fast and I want there to be a lot of detail. So I'm going to go ahead and upscale that. OK, and now that that upscale is done, I can just click on that and the upscale image will be brought up. And now I need to download the image. So what I do is I come up here to these three little dots and you'll see download as an option. You can choose to download it as a PNG or a JPEG. So if you do it as a PNG, it's 100% quality. If you do it as a JPEG, it's 70% quality. Well, we definitely want 100% quality on the PNG here, so we're gonna download that. And then the next step I need to do is to head over to Printify. Printify has a free tier that you can use to create these things. So go in and give it a shot. 
If you do decide to sign up for a premium account, help us out and use the link in the description of this video so you can support the channel while creating your merch. So when I come in, I'm going to go ahead and come down to where it says catalog and I'm going to choose, let's choose t-shirts here and let's put this on a men's t-shirt. And let's say I like, we'll just go with this one, the Bella and Canvas here. This is actually a unisex one. So once we choose the item that we want to put our design on, you come over and you hit this start designing. Pull over the image that we just made. And you'll see that it's adding it to my library. And then there we go. It pops it on the shirt here. And then you can stretch it to be the size that you want it. You can place it where you want. You can angle it. You can choose different colors that you want for the actual t-shirt color behind it. All that fun stuff. So if you guys want a video on how I actually make like products that are high resolution and ready to go and ready to be printed from Printify, let me know and I will do a video on that at a later date and time. But this is the gist of how you can use Ideogram 2 and Printify to create your own merch. And then once you save this product, so obviously I need to do some resolution work and stuff here. But once you save it, it then gives you your mockups to share on your site or wherever you're selling your merch. Shows you what it looks like on the t-shirt. And then you fill in your product details, descriptions, and your pricing. And then once you publish it, you have the link to that that you can share in your store or your shop or wherever it is you're selling your. And that is all we're going to cover on that today. But as we head back to Ideogram, I just want to go over really quickly what I think Ideogram is doing well and what it's not so good at. So I showed you guys an example of the photorealism and to be honest, when compared with a system like Flux or Leonardo, I would personally not choose Ideogram to do photorealistic images. I choose Ideogram for the design aspects of what's available in Ideogram because I do do different brand merch um, creation things. So. The design part is why I choose to continue using Ideogram 2.0 versus some of the other systems. Now that may change. I saw recently that Playground AI has added the design capabilities in their version three. So it'll be interesting to see how that compares in the future. But let's just take a look really quick. If you come on to the Ideogram homepage here, you're going to see all of the creators images who have left their images on public. So one way that I like to see when I go into a system, what it might be good for me to use it for is by looking at other people's work. So if you come in and you go over to the realistic tab here, you can see that you can choose rising from the top hour, top day, top week, top month, top of all time, or the top of the people that I'm following on here. So let's just go ahead and look at the top of all time because that'll give you a pretty good idea of what it's capable of doing. So if you come in and you just scroll to look at the realistic, I mean, you can tell the detail here in the skin looks very realistic. This, however, does not look realistic at all. The wolf has a good look to it. Um, you know, just it, as you're looking through, you can really see that the photorealism just isn't what you're going to get on a system like Leonardo or Flux One. But if we come over to the design and we look at the top of all time, look at the design work on some of these creations. I mean, that's great there. This is print on demand ready to go. You don't have to do anything to this other than create it and put it out there and it is ready to go. You can make graphics to sell, you can do templates, you could do um, print on demand stickers, you could do t shirts, you could do coffee mugs, any of that stuff with these designs from Ideogram. I mean, these are wonderful. Great aesthetics, great design, great colors. I mean, I feel like I could see that on a t shirt walking down the street today. The other thing it does really well is the 3D model here. So if we take a look like that, 
that's beautiful right there with that Mario. Definitely has a 3D feel to it. The little dog coming out of the egg is adorable. I mean, the three dimension of the lips and the mouth here. And how cool is that? Like, it does a great job at three dimensional text, especially. I mean, pretty good there. You can also, after you've created images, go over to your images and everything is stored in one spot. So you can come down and you can select like your generations, your edits, your uploads, your upscales. Or another nice thing is you can search. So if I just search here. And let's say I'm looking for something I made for the Sirens of Sleuth a while ago. I can just put in sirens and it is going to pull up everything that I've done with the sirens of sleuth. And you can see that there is a ton. So when I say that I tried those prompts to figure out what was working well, trust me, I tried those prompts to see what was working well to be able to bring you guys the best information I could. So I might not be the first one out with an ideogram 2.0 video, but hopefully you find mine the most helpful in actually learning the system and knowing what you can utilize it for. So I know the last couple of videos, I have not included the creative project at the end for you guys to actually see. So I wanted to bring that back today and just bring you an upgraded version of a new Sirens of Sleuth song that we released entitled Neon Thoughts. So enjoy a couple of minutes to just sit back and relax and think about what your next creative project is going to be. You did such a great job sticking around and staying for the technical stuff. We think now you should take a couple of minutes to just sit back and relax and enjoy this compilation of images put together with this song that we created just for this video.
As we wrap up today, we want to remind you that your support is what keeps this channel growing. Be sure that you subscribe to our channel, like this video, share our content with your friends, follow us on your favorite social media platforms, and turn those notifications on so that you know every time we drop a new video. Thanks for spending some time with me today. My name's Jessica with The Real AI Agents, and as always, keep looking towards the future.